Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop. And today we're going to redo the video I made for the repairing the snapper clutch. I had a viewer send me an email and uh, this is great, this is what we want, some feedback. And said, I can't do your repair because my snapper only has one brake pedal, clutch pedal. Uh, the newer one, I think it's around 2000, they came out with that. <clears throat> so you have to use that crappy little brake pedal that they put in these things. If you do have one of them, you have to keep your eye on them. Uh, take this off. They will get worn. This is about half worn out. You can see it's still got some flat left on the top. But when this wears down to a sharp edge... What that does is when you go to hit your brake pedal, it will gouge in and lock up your drive clutch, which locks up your whole drivetrain. Now, if you happen to be going down a hill with, like, my yard, my, my bags on my snapper are half sand. I suck up everything in my yard. I don't pick up twigs and sticks and pine cones and acorns. This baby sucks them up. That's why I still have it. Um, and if you happen to be going down a hill and you've got full bags and you hit your brake and this thing grabs, it will, chances are, it will probably break your chain in your chain case or break the chain in your differential. So you've got to keep your eye on this brake. But what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to fix your clutch the way I fixed my other one and still use this goofy little brake they put on them now. My machine has a disc and it has a brake or less like a brake disc. And now these are nice brakes. They work. They, they stop gradually like a regular brake is supposed to. They don't lock up. They're just a whole lot better than this, but they got rid of these because, well, now they're cheaper to build, and they can make a little bit more profit. What, what do you suppose this costs them? 25 bucks to put on a machine? I don't know. <clears throat> don't get me started on that. <laughs> so, we're going to do this today, and uh, let me tip this camera down, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, we're going to take the cover off. You want to keep these four bolts, <laughs> nuts I mean. This cover we don't need, get rid of that. This friction disc, you don't need that anymore, get rid of that. What we're going to do first is we're going to take a sheet of paper, rip it off. That's plenty big. Put your clutch on top of that upside down. Now you're going to take an X-Acto knife and you're going to go around on the inside of this hole and cut that paper out. Now you don't want to let this thing move while you're doing this. Just cut that out the best you can. It don't have to be pretty. It's just a visual aid when you get to the next step. Now you're going to take a pencil and you're going to draw these five holes that are in this disc. There is five evenly spaced 5 16 holes. When I repaired mine, I used 5 16 bolts because that's what size these holes are. If you put a quarter inch bolt through these 5 16 holes, no matter how tight you tighten it, this thing is going to move back and forth on them bolts. And eventually, it will shear them off. Believe me, it happened to me. That's why I went to the 5 16 <coughs> Now you want a little piece of wood. Now if you got a regular paper punch, that'll work. Myself, I make my own punches. I take a piece of pipe, the size I want. I stick it in uh, either a lathe or a drill press or just do it by hand. You want to grind that down until it makes a sharp edge. They make wonderful punches. Just 
line that up on there, tap it with a hammer. There you go. Now, you want to take your clutch disc. These two holes, these are your five evenly spaced holes. These two holes are, I don't know what they're for. They're for the old machines. These holes they have in here are for the old machines back in the 70s, early 70s and late 60s when they actually bolted these things solid like we're going to do now. So what you want to do is we want to make a pencil line right between these two holes as close to center as you can on both of these. We're going to use that for alignment. Now you're going to take this piece of paper. You're going to center that line you made in one of these holes. And this hole here is just going to help you center this up on the disc. So I want to center that up. And then I'm going to take a magic marker. And I'm going to draw these five holes. Now, you're going to take a good punch with a nice sharp point and you're going to mark these holes you just made. Now you don't have to be exact. This is where we're going to drill a quarter inch hole. You don't have to get them exact in that pattern because once we put this on this clutch assembly, we're going to match drill them. So no matter where they are, we just want five to make sure we have enough strength so they don't shear off on you. Now we have to center this. We'll wrap some tape around it. How many layers of tape you have to put around your clutch is going to depend on how bad it's wore out on the inside. This one's, well, this one's fairly new. The outside rubber looks pretty bad. We're going to start, I guess it helped if I put it on the right part. We're going to start this tape, elevate it on this piece of cardboard because you got that lip on there. And we're just going to turn it. wraps on there just rip it off give it a try still wiggles I'll just start that on there again oh that's better now we're gonna go over to drill press we're going to drill some holes in here. I think first, but so this don't move on me, I'm going to put a couple C-clamps on here, or at least one. And then we'll drill some quarter-inch holes in here, and I'll show you how to sink the heads. Let's go over to the drill press. Okay, here we are. We're going to drill these holes. I got a quarter-inch drill. Normally, I would use a 1764 so I have a little bit of clearance for the bolt to go in, but I want these to fit tight so there's no slop and there's less chance they'll shear off on you. So I put these clamps on, but you're going to have to put a little spacer block underneath because it's recessed back here and I, I didn't want to put the clamps on the other way around. I would have had to elevate it a lot farther off the table. So we'll use a little pieces of wood. 
We'll drill the first one. Okay, we speeded that up a little bit because that was way too slow. you can before you move the clamp. Maybe I'll get lucky and I can drill all five without moving the clamp. Now let me take these clamps off and get my chamfer tool. Okay, I use what they call a Weldon's tool. It's a uh, single flute. The way it's ground, it does an excellent job chamfering these holes. The only problem is we don't want it spinning this fast. We've got to slow her down a little bit. That looks better. Now this tool has a pilot on the end that fits in the hole so it lines it up perfectly. These, these type of cutters with all the multi flutes, uh, they're worthless. Don't, don't waste your money buying one. I'm going to raise this table up a little. Why don't you love paws? Alright, let's see if we can chamfer this. Not quite flush yet. We want that to be completely flush with the surface because you can see the wear marks on here where that brake has been rubbing. So we want to get that below the surface so we don't have any problems with that. I go a little bit deeper. And you also notice that you can't really tell, I don't think. We're also chamfering the brake disc because we're going in so deep to get rid of anything sticking up above this surface. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the other four and I'll be right back. Okay, I got all five of them chamfered. They are completely flush. Now you don't want to go too deep because that will give that place... Uh, to break something to catch on will be the hole that you've made. Now to put this together I'm going to use a standard quarter 20 nut. If I were just for speed. Uh, when I put it together to use I'll put nylock quarter 20 self-locking nuts on them. You can buy them at any big box store the bolts I had laying around were way too long as you can tell half inch 
half inch bolt is all you're going to need. I don't have to stick all five of these things in here. We'll put a couple of them in. If you can't find any short half inch bolts, buy what you can find and cut them off. It, not, it doesn't have to be pretty, it's just got to work. Put this on and it spins. Five of these should give you enough holding power that you shouldn't have a problem with it. If it does break on you, instead of buying standard bolts, I'd go to the hardware store and tell them you want grade 8. That's more like an industrial strength. They'll hold up a lot better. I like to use Allen, <coughs> excuse me, Allen heads. You get better holding power with them than you do a Phillips or a regular head screw. They always seem to slip. I like the Allen heads. I use them a lot. <clears throat> Down in a dirty environment like this, sometimes if I'm afraid this is going to get filled up with uh, dirt or rust or packed with sand, what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of silicone on the end of a scale or a knife and I'll just wipe it in that hole. I'll pack silicone in there and let it dry. Then when it comes time to take it apart, and just take your exacto knife and you just pop that hunk of silicone out you got a perfectly clean rust free hole to put your allen wrench in i do that all the time at work and as you can see this fits back on it spins just fine and the brake don't catch <clears throat> if you have any questions send me an email that's what this guy did. He called me up or sent me an email, told me, hey, your fix isn't going to work for me. What should I do? Well, this is what we do. This is why YouTube is here. It's to help you people do something that's really quite simple, but you just need a little help. So if you need any help, you need any instructions, uh, <clears throat> even if it's a video I haven't done, Drop me a line, and I'll help you do it. Maybe I'll just shoot a video on it and do it myself and show you all. My uh, email address is jimsfixitshop at gmail.com or jnrwoodworking2 at gmail.com. And that's what we're here for is to help you guys do something that you just need a little help with. So until next time, Work safe, have fun, and we'll talk to you later.